It's Wednesday, September 8th, 2021, and the morning edition is live. On today's show, uncertainty looming over the status of quarantine workers ahead of election events polling tomorrow. The new Providence Agro Village project taking spotlight this morning. And Charles Fisher explores how residents can benefit from food processing. So let's start the morning off right. Welcome to the morning edition. We are coming to you live from the Gladstone Road Agro Village Complex. Fisher, it's a beautiful morning. I just feel like singing this morning. Glad <laughs> to be on the outdoors. I was tired being inside, oh and we're out gosh. here. The sun is up, coming mm -hmm. up on in the back of us. Everybody seems to be in high spirit this morning, so we're in for a great show. Thanks to the Ministry of Agriculture and Marine Resources for allowing us to be out here this morning, and I'm mm -hmm. ready for a, a great, great show. You got the birds in the, the, the birds background. The birds are chirping. I feel yeah. like I'm on the <laughs> island. I feel like I'm in Andres or Long Island or one of those islands. And, and we're it's definitely just, in the bush. <laughs> definitely, uh, definitely deep in, in the bush. But it's going to be exciting. We're, we're right here off Gladstone show. Road, in case you're wondering. You, have yeah. to, you had to take a, a long trek road to get in the back here, but the complex is pretty. We're seeing a lot of plants. We're seeing a lot of birds. You, you, normally in the morning, all we hear in the morning is those roosters saying, cock a doodle doo but now we hear them <laughs> chirping, chirping, chirping. So we're in, we're in for a good day, uh, Ladon. Because I see the foundation. The foundation has been laid. We're going to speak to the architect, Mr. Les Johnson. He's in the house. He's going to tell us a little bit more about the facility. And then we have uh, Mrs. Uh, Pelicanos. She's going to be talking to us a little bit more about the Agro Village uh, here on Glaston Road as well. So we are in for a great show. But before we start that, thanks to the Ministry of Agriculture and Marine Resources. Our question for this morning, and if we can bring that up on the screen, our trivia question, how many national parks are there in the Bahamas? Ladon, and the number to dial this morning is 4770546. How many national parks are there in the Bahamas? And Ladon, you always give the wrong answers to our <laughs> viewers. And then when they call and say, Ladon said, what is it this morning? How many national parks? I'm going to say 14. 14? 4770546. That's the number to dial this morning if you want to win your farming kit. And we're going to be farming yeah, this morning yes, so you can yes, get your farming yes. kit as part of our trivia answer gift. So, but before we get things started, we'd like to throw it out to Gladstone Road where our Desmond Saunders is standing by with your morning commute. A busy road. Good morning, Des. Charles and LaDon, it's a beautiful, beautiful Wednesday. Charles and LaDon, I'm just a few blocks away from the broadcast site, and I'm here on Gladstone Road, off Gladstone Road, just a few blocks away from where you guys are at, at the farm. And I can tell you it's pretty, uh, picking up pretty nicely. A uh, busy scene out here on Gladstone Road. Corporal Christopher Wims joining me on the broadcast this morning. We were on the farm, now we're on those streets, the busy streets of New Providence. There are some traffic issues uh, relating to speed and persons not driving with due care and a caution. Yes, good morning, Desmond. Good morning, Bahamas. Uh, we, like we noticed a few moments ago, they see the police bike. They see the police presence, but they're still speeding. Mm -hmm. People are still trying to overtake when oncoming vehicles are coming in their path. We want to ask you to cease from those kind of actions. Those kind of actions will cause injury or sometimes death. So we're asking people to please slow down, pick the route, and make sure get to the destination safe and in a timely manner. Now, as you're aware, uh, the next few days is going to be an interesting couple hours, a <laughs> couple nights. And so election fevers in the air, uh, there are going to be a number of activities, motorcades, that kind of thing. Give us some, what are some of the proper protocols and procedures for motorists traversing the streets during this time? Well, Desmond, they can expect uh, more motorcades uh, coming into this election season we had uh, we had to pick those like every other day but now we're getting ready every day there's we have motorcades that are scheduled to go on and those motorcades are scheduled to go on around the time that persons tend to get off so we're asking people that if they see they have to come across a main road they better make sure a motorcade isn't going on or else they'll have to try to find another road I mean Based on the size of the motorcade, they can weigh it out, but we, we expect these motorcades to get bigger 
longer and last very long. So we're asking people to find alternative routes. To, they may try to find their way home or wherever their destination may be, just to ensure that nobody be uh, upset on what's happening in the country at this time. All right, there you have it, Christopher Corporal Wims. Corporal Christopher Wims joining us on the broadcast, dealing with traffic off Gladstone Road. Charles and Don, back to you at the broadcast site. We are waking up to 77 degrees, humidity 94%. A tropical moisture is enhancing the weather across the Bahamas while a weak high pressure maintain light to moderate winds across the country. For the northwest and central Bahamas, weather variably cloudy, warm and humid with widely scattered showers and isolated thunderstorms through tomorrow. For the southeast Bahamas, weather fair and warm tonight with a passing shower, becoming partly the mostly sunny, hot and humid with an isolated shower tomorrow. For your daytime high temperature today, 93 degrees Fahrenheit, overnight low of 73. As we look ahead to the next two days, rain expected in the forecast for Thursday with a day high of 90 and dipping to 73 at night. Then on Friday, rain will ease up a bit but still be cloudy, 89 in the day, 77 at night. The issue of voters in quarantine casting their vote being addressed by the cabinet. Minister of Health, the Honorable Renwood Wells, says the government is exploring ways to make it possible for thousands of quarantine voters to cast their ballot in the upcoming general election on September 16th. With 3,408 active cases of COVID-19 and 3,000 quarantined, Minister Wells says government is now looking to accommodate the group. We understand the issues of the constitutionality of folks wanting to exercise their rights and so a discussion is going to be had on the recommendation uh, because the health professionals did send forward options. I'm not going to speak to those options but their definitive recommendation to government was that these persons not be allowed to vote uh, but the government has come back and says but if we do allow them to vote give us an idea as to how best this can take place. Um, the law the law interestingly enough the parliamentary uh, act i believe allows for the creation of a space or a place for those infirmed national security minister the honorable marvin dames responded to the progressive liberal party who in a letter to acting parliamentary commissioner lovato duncanson this week threatened legal action should provisions not be made to allow quarantine persons to participate in the electoral process minister james dismissed it as political posturing this is a responsible government we will make decisions in the best interest of the Bahamian people. As we would have been, as we were saying from the beginning, that every voting Bahamian will have the right to exercise their constitutional rights. And that is one of the reasons why we would have made amendments uh, to the uh, legislation to ensure that that happened and that it happens in a very responsible way. National Emergency Medical Service is officials appealing to the public that when reporting a medical emergency through 919, inform the technicians whether you are COVID positive. This in light of increased instances of inaccurate information that has led to delays in services and a misallocation of resources. For instance, if an EMES crew is assigned to respond to an emergency call and has not provided accurate information regarding a patient's possible symptoms or COVID-19 status, they are placed at a higher risk of exposure. before resuming the hospital's authority stressing that in some instances the crew may even have to discontinue their response and call for another team amended emergency powers COVID-19 orders issued Tuesday to address advanced poll voting for Bahamians in Barbados that country's COVID-19 restrictions require the presiding officer to be quarantined and won't be available on September 9th therefore section 50 of the parliamentary act has been modified that the advanced poll in Barbados may be taken on the following day Friday September the 10th also making news today, the Water and Sewerage Corporation commissioning a new portable water plant in South Andros yesterday. The initiative is part of a Caribbean Development Bank $28.3 million project with government committed to $13.3 million in counterpart financing. Executive Chairman Adrian Gibson maintains the plant's design and installation is at the highest industry standard. This will be a significant achievement for you, the people of Andros. You can now go ahead and build your villas and your businesses and all the things that you may have had some reservation about constructing. This plant will produce some 30,000 
gallons of water per day. And you have the storage tank behind you that will produce or be able to store, I should say, some 100,000 gallons. So you have reserve water always in storage. We come back, we've got live interviews from officials from the Ministry of Agriculture and Marine Resources. So keep it locked. Activate your power with the new Scotia Card Mastercard Debit. Experience the power of convenience with speedy payments made with a simple tap. Feel the power of safety with enhanced security. From our chip and pin technology, which grants you extra protection at the ATM, online, and at point of sale protection. Your access is granted. Make purchases here or when you choose to travel with priceless Mastercard offers. Activate your power with the new Scotia Bank Mastercard Debit Card. I miss going out with my friends and dancing the night away. I miss being asked you want to sit inside or outside at a restaurant. I really miss traveling without having to get these COVID tests stuck up my nose. I miss not having to wear a mask everywhere. I miss going out to see a late night movie. Want the pandemic to end? Make your appointment now to get vaccinated. This message has been brought to you by the Government of the Bahamas in conjunction with the Broadcasting Corporation of the Bahamas. Let's stay COVID free. Remember the three S's. Sanitize, social distance, and stay inside. live from the Glaston Road Agro Village Complex here on Glaston Road once again. We're joined by the strategic consultant for the Ministry of Agriculture and Marine Resources, Mrs. Garnell Pelicanos. Mrs. Pelicanos, welcome to the Morning Edition. Thank you very much. Good morning and good morning, Bahamas. So, Mrs. Pelicanos, talk to me a little bit about this project. So, as you're aware, the Ministry of Agriculture, we're always seeking um, to create an enabling environment for agriculture and agricultural development. Um, so, uh, very early on in the pandemic, a group of young agricultural professionals came, um, approached the minister and said, you know, we're interested in, in um, having a, a facility where um, they are able to basically um, farm farm together in, in, in um, one location. Mm -hmm. So, uh, my team, the policy and planning unit at the Ministry of Agriculture and the minister, we got busy on doing some research. Um, contacting our colleagues uh, throughout and our counterparts throughout the region and, and just really delving into how it is that we could not only accommodate that but expand on that idea to allow many persons to participate. So that was, that was really the genesis of um, this Agro Village project. So Agro Village is basically um, a cluster of smart farms and in that cluster of smart farms, there's this co-creation, um, there's sharing of knowledge, um, there's access to, to common infrastructure uh, and facility, and, and most importantly, there's access to technology, um, because agricultural technology is the way of, of the future and, and what the ministry want, wants to support and promote. Now, I know the foundation has already been laid. Talk yeah. to us a little bit about this massive uh, undertaking. How is the ministry planning on pulling this off? Oh, so it's going to be, <laughs> and it has been a challenge uh, just because we, we started early on in the pandemic, um, like I would have mentioned, and uh, because, and, and everyone, everyone has their challenges that, that, that delay uh, brought on, but our plan um, was to have six uh, different agro-villages throughout uh, the islands with, with Nassau and Grand Bahama leading the way. Um, we will then uh, go on to... Uh, and not in any particular order, so I don't want people around me. So uh, Eleuthera, Exuma, Andres, and, and Avoco are the next four islands on the block. So we are starting um, one at a time. Like I mentioned, Grand Bahama and New Providence are happening simultaneously, and, and those um, are already in train. Uh, Grand Bahama is much further along than, than, than NASA is, actually. So um, it's, it's a phased approach, and all hands are on deck. And we are, we, are, we, are, we are pulling through. Now, I know the Bahamians and our viewers are wondering, how much is this going to cost? Oh, that, that, that's a very good question. Yeah. Okay, so 
with the um, with the Agua Village. The Agua Village basically has two components. Uh, one is the common infrastructure, which is the building uh, that you see, uh, the Welcome Center. And for for New Providence, uh, that's going to run us about $3 million, uh, as well as uh, the we, we also have farm lots for each individual enterprise. And so those persons have been um, came with their financing and also have been helped through the Small Business Development Center and to get financing. Uh, and then we have, so you have the Welcome Center in the common areas and, and the same thing in Grand Bahama. And the Grand Bahama Welcome Center uh, will cost us about $1.9 million. Um, and... Well, Grand Bahama is a, is a little bit different because Grand Bahama has a very unique feature of, of edible landscaping. And so we, we planted about 2,000 uh, trees uh, there, all edible fruit, uh, local um, um, fruit. We got a lot of donations uh, from persons. I want, I want to shout out Bamsi, thank them for, for their donation as well. So with the, from, from the government's funds and from private donations, we, we, are, we are just... We were doing what we have to do in order to get it done. And how many farmers uh, can you say are involved uh, in this project or tapped into the project? Um, so at, currently in Nassau, we have 20 um, enterprises that, that have been approved. We have a, we have, we have a very long, a lengthy process. Uh, you had to set, submit your financial proposals. The financial proposals were vigorously uh, uh, evaluated. And, and we also we have a waiting list of others that, that are trying to get in. So that, that's for... That's here. Uh, in Grand Bahama, we have, it's a little bit different. We have about 270 plus lots uh, that people are able to access in, in the community garden. Mrs. Pelicanos, thank you so much for joining us here on the morning edition mm -hmm. and all the best in your team on the new Agro Village uh, Complex. Thank, thank you, so, you much. so much for having me. Stay close. We've got more right after this. You're watching the morning edition. Soldier Road was formally opened, and in 2004, on the same day, Hurricane Francis began its track through the Bahamas, causing one death and hundreds of millions of dollars in damage. Grand Bahamas and Salvador and Eleuthera were hardest hit. Activate your power with the new Scotiacard MasterCard Debit. Experience the power of convenience with speedy payments made with a simple tap. Feel the power of safety with enhanced security. From our chip and pin technology, which grants you extra protection at the ATM, online, and at point of sale protection. Your access is granted. Make purchases here or when you choose to travel with priceless MasterCard offers. Activate your power with the new Scotiabank MasterCard Debit Card. Not having the choice to dine indoors is so 2020. Make your appointment to be vaccinated today. This message has been brought to you by the Government of the Bahamas in conjunction with the Broadcasting Corporation of the Bahamas. Hurricane season is here, so now's the time to start checking off your list. Make note of what you have. Test your batteries, radio, flashlights, and the expiry date on your first aid kit. You may have to replace a few things. Then make sure you have at least one gallon of drinking water per day for each person, two weeks supply of non-perishable food, a cooler for ice, and if you have an infant, pack a bag of baby items. Keep spare toilet paper, paper towels, and sanitation wipes, along with cleanup supplies, trash bags, waterproof packaging for personal documents, and mosquito repellent. Have two extra face masks per person and enough hand sanitizer and life vests for everyone in the household. And have a plan. If shelter gets compromised, plan with household members beforehand how you will escape. That might mean having a knife, axe, crowbar, or other tool to pry open a door, window, or roofing in an emergency. For more information and a full hurricane prep checklist, visit ZNSBahamas.com.
Mary Dunleavy. Mary Dunleavy. Dunleavy. Yeah. Mary Dunleavy, welcome to the morning edition. Thank you so much. It's good to have you. So tell us a little you. bit about your role in this project. So, um, so my role, first of all, I'm the new uh, EGA representative in, in the Bahamas. So happy to be here. So thanks for your hospitality to you and, and the rest of the uh, citizens in the ministry. But my role is as representative of IECA. IECA is the Inter-American Institute for Cooperation on Agriculture. We have 34 countries in the Western Hemisphere, including, of course, the Bahamas. Um, the first of these sort of agro-villages was actually in, in our headquarters in Costa Rica. So we're supporting the development of this amazing agro-village that's happening here in the Bahamas. And we're providing technology and some resources and actually just a really good template model from which you can build the agro-village here in, in the Bahamas. So, yeah, we're really excited. This is the first one in the region, and we, we couldn't be more pleased that it's in the Bahamas. How important is it, I guess, for Bahamians to have an agro-village uh, project like this one? Well, you know, this agro-village project, it's bringing in this new technology that I don't think has ever been seen in, in, quite frankly, a lot of the countries, but especially in the Bahamas and some of the smaller economies. Um, so I think it's critical. I mean... Look, I'm, I'm, I'm preaching to the choir when I say 90% of the, the agricultural products are, are being imported into the Bahamas. I mean, this project is really going to, I think, make the Bahamas much more self-sustaining with agricultural development and bring some technologies, as, as I said, never been used before, and link all of the other sort of agri-village projects around the, around the world, which we hope to see a lot more because of your leadership here in mm -hmm. the Bahamas. Are, are you pleased with what you've seen so far? I oh, couldn't be more delighted. I mean, and it's coming with record pace. Uh -huh. Grand Bahamas now here. I mean, you can see, you know, the ground's being broken. I mean, the ministry is just doing an amazing job. Is yeah. there any other, uh, I guess, items that you will want to see us do once we get the Agro Village up and running here in the Bahamas? Well, any suggestions or recommendations? Uh, to keep you know, we're we really excited to link this this Agro Village tourism or, or Agro Village project over with our, our our headquarters. But also, I think more importantly, we've got 80 more of these coming up around the world, and I think that that's what we're so excited about. You know, exchanging all of the technology and the experiences learned, and I think that that would just kind of boost up all the learning curve here much quicker. We're real excited. Are you done, Levy? Thank you so much for joining us here on the Morning Edition and all the best to you, you. and your team. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Meantime, our Charles Fisher is standing by with architect Les Johnson to tell us more about this project. Fisher, what's happening out there? Stay close, we've got more right after this. You're watching the Morning Edition. ZNS is everywhere you are when you download the new ZNS app. Watch our live channel to keep up with what's going on in the nation. News updates, we've got you covered. Tune into our radio stations with just a swipe. On the road, on the go, we're here with you. Available for download on the App Store and the Google Play Store. I miss going out with my friends and dancing a night away. I miss being asked, do you want to sit inside or outside at a restaurant? I really miss traveling without having to get these COVID tests stuck up my nose. I miss not having to wear a mask everywhere. I miss going out to see a late night movie. Want the pandemic to end? Make your appointment now to get vaccinated. This message has been brought to you by the Government of the Bahamas in conjunction with the Broadcasting Corporation of the Bahamas. Hurricane season is here, so now's the time to start checking off your list. Make note of what you have. Test your batteries, radio, flashlights, and the expiry date on your first aid kit. You may have to replace a few things. Then make sure you have at least one gallon of drinking water per day for each person, two weeks supply of non-perishable food, a cooler for ice, and if you have an infant, pack a bag of baby items. Keep spare toilet paper, paper towels, and sanitation wipes, along with cleanup supplies, trash bags, waterproof packaging for personal documents, and mosquito repellent.
have two extra face masks per person and enough hand sanitizer and life vests for everyone in the household and have a plan if shelter gets compromised plan with household members beforehand how you will escape that might mean having a knife axe crowbar or other tool to pry open a door window or roofing in an emergency for more information and a full hurricane prep checklist visit zednessbahamas.com Back now with architect Les Johnson, he's responsible for what you see going on here in the background. Uh, tell us about this, what is going on here, what is the structure all about? Um, this is going to be the welcome center for the Agro Village. Um, it's going to house um, the offices, um, lecture rooms, uh, it's going to have a small smoothie bar so that we could uh, enjoy the, the, the labor from the village. And then um, it's going to have a, a tech room for kids so they come in and they can play on, on the different uh, devices and stuff. So it's a multi-complex um, building that will serve this facility once completed. And it's going to um, be a hybrid sort of a building constructed with concrete at uh, the base and then a steel structure at the top. Um, the building is, is we are laying the foundation now, putting in the rebars and all of the, 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 the um, concrete and, and foundation blocks. And then we're going to set the J-bolts for the building. The building is going to come from the States. It's going to be, a, 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 like I said earlier, a steel complex. I'm very excited to be a part of this project. Now, access to this is well off the road. How will persons be able to access this? Well, I think the route you took this morning was a secondary <laughs> route, <laughs> but there's a main road that comes directly off of Gladstone Road, past the um, food processing uh, facilities that Ministry has here, and you get straight into the, the complex. So it's not going to be as difficult as the route you took this morning. <laughs> How long will something like this take? Yeah, We're looking at a period of about eight months, but, you know, we are fighting this with the presence of a pandemic. And so there's the issue of order of supply chains coming in on time, factories um, moving stuff in and out. But, you know, with all of that uh, to deal with, we're looking at a period of eight months. Well, thanks a lot, Les Johnson. Arkadar. Looking good so far. Can't wait to see the finished product. Thank you. All right. Well, I was also here earlier this week. I took a stroll through the food processing plant. Involved in training push himself to do any level of canning. Um, that includes extens extension work. Um, <clears throat> we have ongoing projects right in, in house, and just in trying to um, create in trucking yards. We would look at all the agricultural product that the Bahamian farmers would grow and try to produce things from it. Sweet potato flour, cassava flour, uh, you have the pumpkin. So all of these are different things that are grown local and they are a good market for, for, for these products. You have the papaya, where we have different preserves made from it. The guava, and you have the guava jar. Then you have all the pep sauces. So no, we, we do a little bit of everything. So in the kitchen, we are going to show the steps for the packaging of pickling cucumber. One of the first things you want to do is cut off the, the the end of the cucumber, the blossom end, and in this process we're going to create we'll, we'll do slices. But you can also do slices and you can wedge it. This is a brand solution. But it, it's a gallon of water with a quarter cup of salt. And we're going to put the cucumbers into those, the sliced cu cucumbers, and we're going to let that sit for about six hours. Now I'll have to, I put this plate on the top because I want everything to be submerged under the water. And what's going to happen here is a process of osmosis. Where you're going to get all the out of the product, all the water, so you will not soak in at the end of the process. After that, the pot and mixture is put in the fridge for about six hours. This is a quarter cup of salt. And I'm using sea salt because you don't want to use the iodized salt. The iodized salt could, could cause interaction with the, uh, the product, causing it to get dark, dark, and you don't want that. 
I'm going to put six cups of water, and this is just going to be my pickle solution, right? Eh? And then I'm going to put in three cups of vinegar. Now you want to make sure that you use a 5% vinegar. For my pickle solution, what I'm going to do, I'm going to put in some dill seeds, but I'm going to put them into the actual water to give me a little bit of flavor. I decide I'll take out some rosemary, and I'm going to put that into the solution to add some flavors to the product. And I also have some onion that we're going to put into this uh, brine solution. During all that, the bowls are being sanitized. You can have cold pack or you can have hot pack. And this method is what we call it hot pack because the pickles are placed in the heating solution. I'll drop a piece of rosemary into the bottle. And that's just to add a little flavor to it, eh? You can add all types of spices. Um, you can have pickled spice, dill seeds. Um, you can put different um, tomatoes. Um, um, you can put pepper if you want to put um, some slice of goat, goat pepper or um, sweet pepper. And just to decorate the bottle itself. Now once you put in the brine solution, you want to you want to look at your product and make sure that you get rid of all the air pockets. Okay, so you want to put a spatula down between the product and remove any trapped air that may possibly be in it. Because if you have trapped air in, in the product, um, there's a possibility um, that could offset your product or to it, cause it to spoil quick. Then you want to make sure that your water is about a quarter inch from the top. After sealing the balls, they are again placed in a hot solution. Bring the temperature up to 180, 185, and this will cook for 30 minutes. And this product will be able to last you much more than a year. Pickle cucumber. When we come back, the answer to our trivia question. Do you know that one of the main reasons for medication failure is due to non-adherence to medications? It is important that you follow these four R's when taking your medications. Right drug, right dose, right time, and right way. Right drug. Remember that each medication is specific for each individual, and what may work for one person may not work for the other. Therefore, you should not share your drugs. Right dose. Taking more or less than what is prescribed by your provider may cause you to either run out of your pills faster, it may affect your kidneys or liver, and it may even worsen your medical condition. Right time. Taking medications when told ensures that you have enough medication in your body to fight off the illness you may have. Skipping doses may lead to drug resistance. Right way. If your medication calls for you to take it whole, with food, or at night only, please follow these directions as there may be side effects. Make a commitment today to be adherent to your medication regimen and practice healthy living. This message has been brought to you by the Bahamas AIDS Foundation with funding provided by PEPFAR, USAID Local Capacity Initiative Small Grant. We're prepared to wrap things up here on the dawn from here at the complex on Gladstone Road. Mm -hmm. How many national parks are there? I'm going to give you another chance to get the correct answer. I'm going to stick to my answer. 14. And finally, one out of 14, LaDawn is right. For the first time, one out of 14, she got the right answer. And the winner this morning is Ned Bodie. And Ned, you can pick up your package from the Broadcasting Corporation of the Bahamas. Later on today is a nice gardening park, all courtesy mm -hmm. of the Bahamas. Agriculture Marine Resources, some cucumber seeds in there, some tomato seeds, some onion. And we're still looking for some cauliflower seeds because we had the yeah, cauliflower yeah. each yesterday. So we're looking. Yeah. But it's yeah. been a great morning out here. Yeah. The sun is starting to really scorch. Your, all your makeup and all is now starting. Your, your, your eye My was on fleek this morning. Now it is on flop. So, 
and you're, and you're greasy, so yeah. But you know, we have to do the challenge. Uh, we got to do a farm in our backyard. Well, I think at ZNS we're gonna, we're gonna do, do one. It, yes. So we're gonna we're gonna do that possibly next week, tomorrow. Tomorrow, show. tomorrow. We like to thank all those that made it possible for us coming out here. I'd also like to thank the crew behind the scenes working here this morning. Had to get out their bed early this morning to yeah, set this up. Yeah, so thank you to everybody yeah. that made this broadcast this morning all possible. And don't forget, coming up later on the day, we'll have news at the Bahamas tonight. We'll also have radio updates throughout the day. So make sure to tune in. But thanks, everybody, for making this broadcast possible. Enjoy your day. Jesus.